Welcome to part four of the Debris Monitoring Training Series. The series is designed to provide an overview of debris monitoring no matter the experience level. This training is provided by the Public Assistance Training and Development Branch. And this is video four of a six part series. What are we covering in this video? We're covering hazardous stumps, stumps removed by contract, which stump is potentially eligible for PD funding, documentation requirements, and what documentation should be uploaded to Grants Manager. Let's discuss hazardous stumps. It is outlined in the Public Assistance Policy Guide, also known as the Papa G. Please make sure you're using the version of the Papa G that corresponds to your disaster. I recommend that your monitors familiarize themselves with the Papa G debris section as part of their training. Training costs are reimbursable, provided that they are reasonable. The following information is for the applicant conducting the removal themselves. We will cover contract stump removal in the following slide. High winds and flooding events may cause uprooted stumps. Removal of the stump and filling the root ball hole may be eligible when a stump has 50% or more of the root ball exposed. However, it's crucial to clarify that just because there is a stump does not mean that the root ball will be or has been removed. A stump can be flush cut, the root ball can be exposed and removed, or grinding may also be used. If grinding a stump in place is less costly than extraction, this option may be eligible. Grinding typically leaves chips in place, which can often be used as mulch, provided that they do not harbor any invasive species, such as the beetles that can be found in Virginia or Colorado. If you're dealing with a historic district or any potentially historic sites, be cautious. When it comes to stump removal areas with civilian conservative core projects or known or high potential for archaeological resources, the situation usually requires that FEMA further evaluate and consult with state historic preservation officers or tribal historic preservation officers. This is especially true if you have upturned trees near sidewalks in historic districts. Such assessments are reimbursable by FEMA. If an applicant discovers any archaeological resources during stump removal, all work must cease, and FEMA should be notified immediately. Stumps removed by contract. FEMA only reimburses contracted costs charged on a per stump basis if extraction is required as part of the removal. The applicant needs to ensure the price of stump removal includes extraction, transportation, disposal, and filling the root ball hole. If you prefer to use force account labor to fill the hole, coordinate effectively with your contractor to avoid redundant cost. Make sure that the material used to fill the root ball is logged correctly. Where was this material obtained? What is the material made of? EHP may want to know what type of dirt was used and where it was from. For stumps that have less than 50% of the root ball exposed, FEMA only provides PA funding to flush cut the item at ground level and dispose of the cut portion based on volume or weight. Grinding any residual stump is not eligible. Once again, make sure to avoid redundant cost. You cannot flush cut and also grind. Which stump is eligible for PA funding? As you observe both of these pictures, you'll see that the stump on the left has more than 50% of the root ball exposed and it is in the right of way, posing a threat. These two points make it a tree stump eligible for removal. However, the stump on the right does not meet these conditions. What if anything can be done with the stump on the right? The stump on the right should be flush cut. Please refer to Appendix E of the Papa G version 4 for the stump conversion table. Please make sure that you're using the correct Papa G for your disaster. Documentation requirements. Documentation is key. Applicants must retain and provide when requested all the documents to support the eligibility of contracted work related to removal of hanging branches, leaning trees, stumps that are flush cut, and stumps that have been extracted. If trees are determined not to be hazards, ensure that they're also logged appropriately. Information that is required to be provided by the applicant to FEMA includes specifics of the immediate threat with the location and photographs or video documentation 
that establishes that the item is on public property. FEMA reviews a representative sample of everything submitted. Location should be provided via geographical or GPS coordinates. It is essential that the GPS location of the stump is accurate. Use mobile devices to gather reliable coordinates. If your contractor is going to remove stumps, ensure your monitor identifies their location beforehand. Allowing the contractor to remove stumps without prior GPS documentation could jeopardize funding if those stumps are eligible. Quantity removed. Please note that if a contractor charged an individual price for each limb, tree, or stump removed, FEMA requires diameter of each item removed. For stumps, the measurement must be two feet off the trunk from the ground, and for trees, it must be 4.5 feet up from the ground. Quantity, location, and source of material to fill root ball holes. Make sure to document all stump removal meticulously, including the source of material used to fill root ball holes, whether from your own stockpile or a contractor's and information on equipment used to perform the work. Equipment used for debris removal must be documented too. Truck certifications apply not only to hauling, but also to grinding equipment. Record the horsepower, make, and model of the machinery used to ensure proper reimbursement. Additional information can be found in the Papa G version four, page 103, chapter seven, section one, subsection B, part four. Please make sure you're using the correct Papa G for your disaster. What documentation should be uploaded into Grants Manager? As mentioned in the previous slide, the applicant must retain and provide, when requested, all the following to support the eligibility of contracted work to remove stumps. Specifics for immediate threat with the location and photographs or video documentation that establishes that the item is on public property. Quantity removed, quantity, location, and source of material to fill root ball holes, and information on equipment used to perform the work. Sometimes, applicants run into complications with lump sum contracts and identifying the precise location of debris. TFLs should work with their PDMGs as early as the exploratory call to communicate to the applicants that the information needs to be provided with as much precision as possible to ensure a smooth reimbursement process. If the applicant submits a Streamlined Project Application, or SPA, for debris removal, they will be required to enter each stump, limb, and hazardous tree separately, with dimensions and GPS coordinates. The hazardous stump worksheet can be found in Appendix F of the Papa G version 4, but as a reminder, please make sure you're using the correct Papa G for your disaster. Fraud risk reduction information. For more information on the highest observed fraud risk to PA emergency work grant funds, with respect to Category A, watch the video titled Category A Debris Removal Fraud Risk Profile. This video can be found by searching Fraud Risk Profile on YouTube. Now we have some closing information for you. To report corruption, waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, and or misconduct, contact the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General by phone at 1-800-323-8603 or via the mailing address listed on the screen now. Procurement requirements are among the most complicated parts of the PA grant process and non-compliance can result in de-obligation of funding. Please make sure that you are following FEMA's procurement guidance for recipients and subrecipients. Federal requirements for procurement and contracting are described in 2 CFR Part 200. The Procurement Disaster Assistance Team, or PDAT, offers some training and tools on their website at www.fema.gov grants procurement. For technical assistance with Grants Portal or Grants Manager, you can call the PA Grants Portal Grants Manager hotline at 866-337-8448. National hours of operation are 8 a.m. through 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. 
The hotline can also be reached by email at FEMA-recovery-PA-grants at FEMA.dhs.gov. We have many other recorded webinars and tutorial videos available on our YouTube channel. You can find them by searching for FEMA Grants Portal on YouTube or by navigating to the Support Center in Grants Portal or Grants Manager. Thank you for watching.